So I have Jmobile Studio open here. To create your first project, um, you can just click File New or click this new icon up here, and you'll get this, this um, dialog here. So the first module is just about setting up your project, setting up protocols and tags, um, and getting access to the HMI. So for setting up your project, you can define where you will have your project saved. By default, it will go to this Jmobile workspace folder, but you can change it if you want by clicking this. Um, you can change the name of your project. And once you've done that, you can click Next to select which unit size or type that your project will be developed on. So the main difference between a lot of these is just the screen size. Um, I'm going to develop for EX707, but first I'm going to pick the wrong one on purpose so that I can choose how to, or so that I can show how to change it. I'm going to pick 710. Um, we can also change the orientation here, so if you need it to be sideways or, or even upside down, this is possible as well. So I can click Finish to go ahead and load my first project here. Um, you can use the zoom in and zoom out icons to get a better view of your, your project. So this is designed for a, a 10 inch screen since I selected 710 and we can see the, the page width and height here. Um, however, this is not actually what I want. I want a seven inch screen instead. So in order to change this, and this is how you would change um, your project if if you need to scale it down to a different size screen or if you need to have it on two different types of screens, you would double click project properties. And we can view all of the project level properties. Well, one of those properties is, is going to be project screen type. So within our project, we have project level properties, which is what I'm going to look at here. And back on the previous tab, we had page level properties which are visible on the right side here whenever I'm not clicked on anything, when I'm just clicked on a page. And if I had a widget and I clicked on the widget, I would be able to look at the widget level properties on the right side here. So notice that now that I've clicked project properties, I have another tab open. This is how we, we navigate throughout our project um, by clicking our items on the left side here, and then we can navigate um, by changing the tab. So. First, I need to locate the um, project type property on the right side here. And usually the best way to go about doing that is by expanding all of the properties. The first button here shows advanced properties, um, which will reveal some things that were previously hidden. And then the second property, or the second button here expands everything. So it will show all of our, our properties here, which is what we want to have. If you scroll down and find project type, which is nested either below project or below behavior, depending on your version of Jmobile, um, you'll find project type, which has the, the screen that I just picked. I'd like to change this so I can click on the plus sign and load that dialog back up again. And now I can change it to 707 and click finish. Um, you'll usually want to say yes to this dialog here. This is just asking me um, if I'd like to actually change the screen size. If I were to say no, then my screen would be much too large for the actual screen on my HMI. So you would usually want to say yes there. And now we can see that my page width and page height have gotten a bit smaller. Um, and my screen is now going to be scaled for uh, 7 inches instead of 10. So now that I've done this, um, it's already finished in my case because my project is blank. However, if your project already had a lot of work done on it, then you might notice some widgets kind of off of the screen here. Or if you were making your project bigger, you would notice a lot of empty space that you would need to resize things to fill. There's an easy way to do that using the target zoom feature here. So to use the target zoom, we just enter in the ratio that you either scaled down from or scaled up to. Uh, in this case, it would be about 0.7, just going from um, a 10-inch screen to a 7-inch screen. But you can figure out exactly what that ratio would be by um, taking the, the initial size and dividing it by the, the new size. 
So once we use that target zoom feature, the widgets will be resized for us automatically. If um, you'd rather do it manually, you can click and drag, as uh, I'll show in a little bit, to select all of your widgets and um, drag the, the corners to resize them. So I'll look at a, maybe one more thing in project properties later. But for now, I think I'm ready to close that tab. So notice that all of the tabs that we've made changes to have this asterisk, which indicates unsaved changes. I can save, but it will save only my currently open tab. So usually it's good to click Save All to make sure everything is saved before you start closing out any of your tabs. So now that we have our project set up and configured for the correct size screen, I'd like to add some protocols so that I can begin uh, connecting to other devices. I can do this by double clicking on protocols on the left side of the screen here and opening the protocols tab. I can add my first protocol by clicking uh, the plus sign and then clicking the drop down menu. And from here, I'm able to look at uh, a list of our protocols. So the first one I'm going to add is Modbus TCP. After I select that protocol, I'll see this dialog, um, which is going to prompt me to start setting it up. I can type its IP address in here. Um, I can select whether it should be 16-bit based registers or 32, which uh, usually it's going to be 16. I can select if addressing should start at 0 or 1. I can change the port as well, even though it will usually be 502. So this would allow me to set up con connection with uh, one PLC. If needed, to connect to multiple PLCs that are running the same program and that are going to share the same tag, tag database, I can check off this PLC network feature or checkbox here. And what this will allow us to do is um, add multiple PLCs that we're going to connect to um, at the same time that use the same tag database. So I could simply click Add here and begin adding them. The number of PLC slaves that we support here um, varies depending on the protocol, but usually it's a pretty large number. So I'm just going to uncheck that. Um, and only have it set up for one PLC. Uh, I don't actually have one, so I'm just going to make up a, an IP address. And I can click OK to uh, finalize that. If I decide I need to change it later, I can click in this configuration cell and click on the square here and load this um, dialog back up and make a change. So now that I've done this, I've created my first protocol. and um, I want to mention that even if I had set up a PLC network to connect to maybe five or 10 or any number of PLCs, uh, as long as they were part of that network and shared the same tag database, they would still be part of the same protocol. So I could be connected to five or, or way more um, PLCs with my one Modbus TCP protocol. And this is one external protocol, as we call it, because it's communicating with another, with another device. And we can support up to four of those external protocols. So the first one being Modbus TCP. And um, you know, another one could be a different type of PLC. Or it could even be Codasys, uh, which I'm going to add next. So Codasys, even though it does reside um, on the HMI, it does require us to use one of our four external protocols. So to set up Codasys, we simply enter in the localhost IP address and um, click OK, and we've got it set up. So I, I won't go too far into Codasys um, during this training. It's, it's more of a topic for our advanced trainings. But uh, if you do need to set it up, then this is how you can set up that Codasys protocol. And now that I've added it, I do have two external protocols, which is fine for just this training. Um, but I'd like to add a couple, or maybe just one other protocol, which is an internal protocol. So if I find the variables protocol at the bottom here, then I can add it as an internal protocol. 
what an internal protocol is, is it's just the way to um, reference data local to the HMI, not going to any other devices. So the variables protocol will allow us to just create some, uh, some tags that are good for internal math or, or temporary data storage, but they're not actually going to go to any other devices. And another one is the system variables protocol, which could be used in a couple different ways. One way is to um, reference the I.O. modules that could be mounted onto the back. Another way is to use retentive memory. Uh, this would allow us to store some data and have that data's value be retained even after the HMI is turned off and back on again. You could also use um, some variables that refer to things like the screen brightness, the system time, um, or, or, or a lot of things like that, screen bat or brightness or light battery, I mean. So using the system variables is a way to access those uh, data points. And I'll actually show uh, a shortcut for accessing them in a different way. So here I'm just going to select variables because I'm going to use it um, for a lot of these test project elements. So after I save this, I will close out of the protocol screen and open up the tags screen by double clicking it here. So this is how we can either manually create tags or import them just to add tags um, in a much faster way. So first I'm going to manually create some tags, um, even though I think usually most people will be importing the tags from their PLC, um, just using some kind of file exported from the PLC. Um, but first, I'm going to create a couple manually. So when doing this, the first thing to check is to make sure you are adding your tags to the correct protocol, which we have in this drop-down menu here. If I click on it, I can select which protocol I'm adding my tags to. I do want to start with Modbus TCP. So with that selected, I can click the plus sign to create a new tag. When you create your first tag, you'll have this dialog open up and you can um, configure the tag. So I can select the memory type, the offset, and uh, the data type, which I'll just leave as an unsigned short. So I can click OK. And now I have created my, my tag. I can change the name by clicking in the name cell and um, giving it a new name. And if I need to change that configuration, then I can change it in a similar way that I changed the protocols by clicking in the cell and clicking the square to get this dialog back. So I can do this if, if I decide I need to change the data type um, or anything else. The next time I create a new tag, it will default to the same data type um, of the next offset. So since my uh, register addressing is 16-bit, it's good that it put it to 4002, which would be the next space. However, if my first item was an integer, I might need to change this um, to 4003, since integers are 32 bits in JMobile, and shorts are 16. Um, it will just keep pushing the next tag name down to tag 1, tag 2, tag 3. Um, it won't know to call it short 2 or something like that. So that's something that you may need to edit. So that's just a, a couple ways to, um, or a couple manual, manually created tags. I'm going to quickly add a couple more here just for the sake of uh, this demonstration. So notice that I created four tags real quick and it made them all Booleans. But if I change this Boolean to an integer and add a couple more tags, it'll retain that, that integer value. So for our variable tags, there really isn't much that we need to set up here. Uh, there's no offset because we don't we don't really care where it's being saved. Um, JMobile's just going to save it wherever it, it needs to save it. Um, and, and we'll just reference them internally only. However, you might need to define the array size. For example, if this was um, an array of shorts, you could define the array size. Or if this were a string, which is what I'm going to make it, we can define the size of the string. So if I set that to 20, that means that my string can have up to 20 characters. So we've we've manually created a lot of tags, and in the next 
next thing I want to do is show how to import our tags. So I, I do have a tag file that I exported from Codices um, that I'm going to import the tags with here. So in most cases, you'll be able to export some kind of tag file from your PLC. Um, the formatting of that file varies depending on exactly what your PLC is. Often it will be an XML file or a CSV file, but it, it could be some kind of table or some kind of special file type specific to your PLC software. For example, if it's a Compact Logix PLC, it would be L5K or, or L5X um, or something like that. So in order to actually import that file, we need to click on this icon here with the arrow in the bracket, import tags. And this will give us uh, a pop-up showing which types of files we can handle. So for Codasys, we're only able to enter XML files, which is fine because that's the only thing Codasys will export. But if you were using Modbus TCP or Ethernet IP um, or, or some other protocols, you might have a lot more options here with things like CSV or, or L5X. The last option will always be tag editor exported XML. Um, all that is, is if you decided to export your tags from JMobile using this icon up here um, and import them back into a different JMobile project, you would have to use this, this last choice. Um, but for my codices file, I'm going to use XML linear and click OK. Next, I'll be prompted to find that file on my computer. Um, I'm just going to pick this one and open it up, and it will import the tags um, into what we call the tag database, which is what we have at the bottom of the screen here. So the tag database is a little bit different than when I created my tags at the top earlier in what I called the tag, or sorry, this is the tag dictionary at the bottom, and it's a little bit different than the top of the screen, which is the tag database. Uh, the tag dictionary is tags that we've um, imported into JMobile, but have not fully gained access to in our project yet. So we can add anything from the tag dictionary to the tag database to gain access to it, um, just like I had access to my manually created tags by clicking on them and importing them. So you might not need to add all of them. You can click and hold control and click on different tags to select only some of them. You can click and press Control A to select all of them, or you can click and drag to select um, whichever ones you want. So I'll just select all of them, and then I'll use this Import Tags button here to move my tags from my tag dictionary into my tag database, and I now have access to them throughout my project. So just to kind of show an overview of my tags here, I can click Show All Tags as my protocol, and I'll be able to see um, all of the tags that I made of different protocols. That should be all of the tags that I need for this, so I'm just going to save and close the Tags tab. And um, the other things that we're going to cover for our first module here are connecting to the HMI, running the simulator, and using the system settings. So first, to connect to the HMI, um, you can either click Download to Target to download um, your project to the screen, whether it's a project you're downloading the first time or if you've made some changes and you're downloading it again. Or you can click Manage Target to um, change a couple other things on the screen. So I click Manage Target the first time, and I can use this drop-down arrow here to select the screen that I want to use. I'll select this first one here. And once I've selected a screen, you'll see that most of these buttons um, have become highlighted. I can click Retrieve Projects to load up all of the different projects on my screen in this window here. Um, the red icon is showing the project that is currently being shown on my screen. If I would like to change that, then I can click on a different one and click Load Project and the other project will become loaded instead. Um, I could click Unload Project to stop showing this project, and my screen would just have no project uh, loaded. I would see a white screen. I could click Upload Project 
This would allow me to extract the project, um, or copy it rather, from the HMI to my computer. Or I could delete a project that's not currently active uh, with delete. Um, an important button here is update runtime, or sometimes it might say install runtime. The first time that you ever use one of your HMIs for the first time, it will not have JMobile runtime on it. So it's necessary to go into this manage target screen and install the runtime. Or whenever you are using a new version of JMobile for the first time, for example, when we release JMobile version 2.8 and you want to convert from 2.6 to 2.8, it'll be necessary to download the new version of the runtime onto your screen. And it's okay if you forget to do this, because if you try to download the project normally with download the target, if your runtime on the target is out of date or not there yet, then when you click download, it will force you to download that project or download the runtime. And another way to download is just clicking this icon here or pressing Control plus D, and it will. Um, it will take you back to that same window. You can also create an update package by choosing the selection here, update package, which will export your file um, or your project as a zip file. And you can store that zip file on a USB stick and plug it into the screen and upload the project that way, which is a good way to do it if your screens are maybe out in the field already and you don't have easy access to uh, the Ethernet port or to a computer nearby. Downloading a project that way is usually pretty fast. The first time you download a new project, it, it might take around 30 seconds, but future downloads are usually 10 seconds or less. However, sometimes, sometimes it's still faster to use the simulator for testing, especially if you like to test a lot. Or you can also use the simulator for testing if you do not have a screen with you. So if I click the simulator icon, it's going to launch the simulator in another window. Um, when we start using this more later, we'll see some more stuff on my screen. Um, but right now it's just blank. I do want to show that by clicking this icon up here, I can change between uh, what we call an offline simulation or an online simulation. While I have these items checked off, it's in offline simulation mode. That means that JMobile Simulator is just going to make up some numbers to use instead of the actual Modbus TCP number. So instead of getting a communication error, it will just put a zero, and I can edit that zero and change it to another number. If I uncheck these, then it will let me actually communicate with my PLC, which um, could be very good in case you don't have the HMI with you, but you have the PLC connected to your computer. Or just in case um, you prefer to test this way because it can be faster to download. So in this case, this would allow you to um, receive the values that are coming in from your PLC. Um, you could write a new value to that PLC tag. Or if you're not connected to the PLC, you'll receive a communication error, which I'm going to demonstrate when we get to Module 2. So the last item for Module 1 that I'd like to show is using the system settings. There are two ways to get to the system settings. One way is using um, the touch and hold macro um, to open up a, a context menu that allows you to enter the system settings. Um, I'm just going to show a quick demo of how to do that by projecting my screen. So. Here's uh, a projection of one of my screens. If I touch and hold, I can get this context menu, and then I can click Show System Settings um, to get to that menu, or to get to the system settings. Another way is to open it in browser by using the IP address. In case you can't remember the IP address, you can obtain it from one of these Manage Target or, or Download the Target windows. Um, select the panel that you want to use, and just copy it. So then in my browser, I can type in https colon slash slash the IP address slash machine underscore config. 
and this will allow me to um, access the system settings. I will need to sign in using a password that is set to admin username admin password by default, but it is possible to change that. So from here, I now have access to the system settings. Uh, I can change the language. I can look at the build date, um, things like how long the unit has been on. I can extract the logs. I can configure the date and time. I can configure my network or my Ethernet ports. So if I click edit here, I can turn DHCP on or off. And while it's off, I'm able to enter in a static IP address. If I click on services, I see a lot of things here that um, you might want to use, such as VNC, which is what I was just using to project my screen, um, SSH, which would allow us to open up um, a shell with something like PuTTY or use FTP or a cloud service, which is how we configure and use Corvina. So I have my Corvina credentials here, and you can see that I'm connected with this IP address. Um, Corvina is something that we would cover in, in, a, in an advanced training. Also, we have um, just an interface for our plugins. If I had the plugin modules um, mounted onto the back, I could see those here. Management. This is where we can see what uh, BSP version we're running, and it could also be updated from here. I'm also able to click this data tab and um, wipe wipe everything off of my unit here if I need to. Uh, restart would just allow me to restart in config mode or recovery mode if I ever needed to do that. And finally, authentication just allows me to change the username and password that I use to access this screen. So really, that's it for the system settings. Um, I just have the website open here, and it's something that I think we'll look at at the end. But really, that's it for Module 1. Um, the items for Module 1 were creating a project, changing the project type, uh, that means the screen size, adding protocols, we added variables, Modbus, and Codasys, adding and importing tags, uh, connecting to the HMI, downloading the project, and um, downloading runtime, using managed target interface, using the simulator, uh, including offline and online simulations, and accessing the system settings. So uh, I see we have at least one question here. Um, and we'll take a, a break for a couple minutes to answer the question. Um, if anyone has any additional questions, feel free to ask them, um, mostly for the topics that we covered already. Uh, module 2 is about widgets and properties, and Module 3 is about creating events and pages. So if you have questions about anything for those topics, we'll probably cover them um, coming up. So for the first question, um, why would I use the PLC network approach versus adding multiples of the same protocol? You would use PLC network if your multiple PLCs are um, using the same project. And by using the same project, that means they're using the same tag database. So really, the reason that we have a limitation on the number of our protocols is because each protocol has a unique tag database. And those tag databases can take up a large amount of memory. So if you have PLC projects that are using, or PLCs that are running the same project, um, you would use the same tags, and you would be um, you know, writing to the same tags on different PLCs at the same time. However, it's possible you would need to use two different PLCs um, that happen to be using the same type of protocol with different um, tag databases and different projects. And in that case, you would want to um, actually add multiple instances of the same protocol. and um, you'd be able to control those PLCs separately. And that would use up um, two or, or potentially more than two of your, of your four external protocols. So does that kind of uh, clear up the difference between PLC network and multiples of the same protocol? 
It does, thanks. Okay, sure. And that's a good question. 